I should start by sharing the screen and let's see. So you can have at least the title of the presentation um, which I'm giving, which again, as I was saying in the beginning, is the um, fourth time, if I'm not wrong, right, Eleni, that I, that I do it. Yes, um, three, three or four, I'm not four, sure. Four, I'm pretty sure that is four. And so the format is, it's the same. And you might have uh, seen me or not in other um, chats or other uh, Zoom calls as just a uh, lurker, uh, which has been super interesting for me. Um, but for the ones of you who have never, never got in touch with me, I'm Nicola Gallio and uh, Today, for the sake of this exercise, as I call it, I'm going to present a couple of case studies from this year, this year of, of MFI, uh, which I thank again for having me because I'm having a super great, uh, great time every time that I take part into the program. And also, I have to thank two teams that this year allowed me to do the exercise and to show a little bit of the process that we did together. And uh, the two teams are the one for Maya and the one for Machaya Spire AM. So thank you guys for allowing me to present a bit of the, of the process to the other participants. And I hope that uh, you would find interesting to go through uh, some of the uh, themes, issues, and interesting ideas that we have uh, together. So I say together because I usually present myself as a facilitator, um, and actually the guys that work with me do the job. So it's their effort, and I just they are suggesting approaches and sending exercise. And the format, more or less, is like that. I work with two projects, three hours, more or less, each. Uh, this time on a Zoom call, uh, usually on a face-to-face -face meeting. But before that, I ask everyone to complete uh, a few exercises. And these few exercises allows me to have a better understanding of the project, aside from the fact that, of course, I uh, analyze all the materials that are available. So reading, synopsis, script, looking at mood board, trailer, or whatever. But for the reason uh, that uh, I have a method, let's say, I also send out a few exercises in advance. And that is the basic of the beginning of the conversation. And so, uh, to be more precise about uh, the whole process, um, just a few words about me very quickly. I am a consultant in marketing communication. I work with several creative industries, not just cinema, but let's say that I am vertically specialized in cinema. And I have a background in film studies as a PhD and also as a consultant, which means that I do uh, many things for many clients uh, in many moments of the year that are quite different. I can work as, either as a digital PR or a research and insight analyst or a content marketer or a social media marketer. So it depends each and every time is different. Um, re more recently, I've worked for a documentary film in Italy, uh, which is called Cercando Valentina, Search for Valentina which ended up uh, winning the silver ribbon. Um, and I work as a social media manager along with a colleague of mine, Roberto Braga. And either I work on my own or I work as a consultant for marketing agency or marketing and communication agency, which can be quite different uh, for the Italian market mainly, but also for the international market through partners and so on. If you ask me what I do, it depends on the time of the year. I give you a different answer each and every time. And I say that because some of the exercises, some of the approaches that I bring uh, with, the, uh, with the guys come not necessarily from the film industry. Maybe sometimes it's advertising, sometimes it's digital strategy, generally speaking, and sometimes it's uh, much more marketing uh, content. And the, the main work that we do together is, uh, let me just reduce this one so you might see better. 
the main work that we do together is usually looking at this whole broad concept of thinking about audiences and the reason why i put all this kind of error on this um, let's say scheme that i like to introduce you to is because in my uh, experience this kind of process of thinking and getting closer and closer to the audience it, it goes in many different directions so it's not just a straightforward process but it goes up and down, back and forth, and what happens at a very precise stage, for example, of the development of the release, distribution phase, might have an impact to later stages. And if you think about fast forward to the future of your project, you might find that it's a useful way of looking at that because you might have ideas that you can use right now to be implemented later on, but to be developed uh, very earlier uh, in, in respect of the time that you, you will use them. So a very basic example of this uh, concept is, for example, when you have a um, distribution moment of your film and uh, you will need promotional material, for example, interviews to, I don't know if it's a documentary, to the characters of your film, or you need extra shooting or behind the scene and you realize that you don't have almost anything, well, if you had thought about it in advance, you would have the material that you will need later on. And an example that I usually um, that I usually bring on the table is that when I work with a director that shot a film in a war zone, at the time of the distribution and the promotion, they really needed more material and they couldn't go back, for example, and take extra shooting or make interviews because the, the zone was totally unreachable. So that's why you might think in advance about having also that in the back of your head aside for shooting, for shooting the films. And this line, of course, is in theory never ending because the release phase, the post-release phase, or whatever you want to call it, might last as long as you have, as I say, usually ideas, which is the creative part of it, and budget, which is, of course, the monetary side of the whole uh, situation. And one way of looking at the same, uh, uh, let's say, long-term perspective is from a more marketing-driven approach, um, thinking about the so-called marketing funnel. So it's the representation that you see on the right of the screen. This shape, it's the basic shape of the funnel and it's the way that many people intend the marketing funnel in general. And it's the same saying of um, when, you, when you have a movie, you don't necessarily just engage with the audience as many people just say, generally speaking, you create a pathway that in the end will end up in having the so-called conversion. So you will have someone that hopefully will buy the ticket for your film. But it's gonna start many, many months before, ideally at least, uh, with the so-called awareness phase. It's the red one on top of it. Um, and that is the part that is usually referred to as the top of the funnel, whereas the conversion is the bottom of the funnel. So up there, when you see all the gray hats, is uh, an audience that totally that doesn't know anything about your film, okay? They are totally unaware of its existence. The awareness phase is the first one that starts to get people aware that your film is either being produced or being in the development stage or being almost ready to go to the market. And then what you have to do usually is you have to try to gather their attention and bring them from the top of the funnel to the bottom by doing things. These things are usually marketing and communication activities or digital PR or PR generally speaking. So it's some sort of formal interaction with the audience that you use in order to drive their attention and to give elements to like your film, to follow what you're doing, and in the end when your film is available, to buy the ticket and go and see it. Or if it's online, to get, let, them more, let, let, let them know that, for example, it's on Netflix or on Amazon or whatever that it is. So that's the funnel, more or less, and it works like that for all the businesses, all the services, all the products that you can think of. 
film included. And of course, what it makes the difference is each and every time is a different product and is a different audience. On the left side of the slide, you see a traditional way of looking at the interaction between your story and the audience. The way I like it is that it's very simple, but takes into account three uh, crucial elements, which is about delivering the right content to the right people at the right timing with the right channel. The way you do it, it's taking elements out of the story world, creating content that is delivered through marketing or communication and having people um, following the film, in this case, through this extra content. So I'm already talking about having a, a layer in between your story and your audience, which usually is uh, covered by marketing and communication activities. For the ones of you who, of course, had already experience in the way this promotional phase uh, work, um, it's about my vision creating tailor-made content that might spread the word about your film by delivering something that is meaningful to an audience that has an interest for it which usually means uh, you have a variety of options. You can create quite a few content. It can be the key artwork. It can be using PR activities to generate press interest into the director and the movie. It can be used in social media, creating extra content taken from the story world of the film, starting from the behind the scene, promo clips, and whatever you can imagine. And the reason why I like to put this kind of approach into a geometrical shape like a polygon, like you see at the center, is that for me, uh, having a background uh, in, in communication and content marketing, you can deliver a content that is really tailor-made to someone who has an interest for this specific theme, topic, or content itself. It's, if it's, um, let's say, packaged in a way that is appealing, like memes or short clips or whatever you can think of. And so each and every facet uh, of this polygon can talk to a different audience. But overall, it's part of the same structure. It's part of the story world, it's part of the film. So maybe you had already experience of this process in a more, uh, let's say, basic structure. And it's again, a flat line like this one that I'm showing you. Um, you might have heard about engagement, you might have heard about awareness, and there are ideally three different phases, including the conversion, which is the last one. And if you have worked already for uh, promoting your film with agencies like communication agencies, consultant, or marketing, they usually have this way of dividing the process into three phases. And of course, because they are quite pricey, they are not on board since the very beginning of the project. They might want to have a full product to work on. They might say, I can work with you, but just for a few months because the budget is this or that. And so I gave you a, time, a timeline, which is also something that I use for, for my clients, where they can say, uh, we can work together for four months and we will shape these actions that are useful to promote your film into the these three different stages and we start with the awareness phase and then we go through engagement and then when you have a schedule for your film a theatrical release we go through the conversion and we'll make everyone aware of where and why and how much is going to cost buying the ticket for the film um, everything is clear so far do you have any question you can stop me anytime Yes, okay, I, I take that as a yes. So what I usually do in, in this exercise that I was telling you in the beginning of the MFI is looking at a process that I usually divide in six phases. And with the team that I work on, we are in the phase one and just in phase one um, that I call audit, which means going through everything that is useful to know at the stage of the process and the project uh, where you are, 
before getting into something that is much more concrete, which is the strategy, which then will lead at how to implement it, meaning that you will have to find a set of ideas, having to find a timeline, hiring people. So it's about budgeting and having a team on board and doing something that is very specific with channels that has been selected with an outcome that has been shared. And uh, it's usually what many call KPI, uh, finding a key performance indicator, which means uh, something that is relevant to you to keep an eye on in order to measure the results that you are planning to, to reach. So that goes through the implementation on the strategy and the monitoring phase, which is super important. That means uh, keeping an eye on what happens and see if the results are in line with the expectation. If not, going through the fine tuning of the process and changing approach, changing strategy, try to uh, find other ways to engage with the audience and then again measure the results and if everything is okay you do it again 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 and again and you keep on doing it until the campaign is over or the consultancy is over or whatever it was the outcome that you wanted to achieve 